You are listening to the Slow Living Podcast, and I'm your host, Stephanie O'Day. What if I told you that you could truly have the life of your dreams, the life you've always wanted, one filled with abundance, joy, and a sense of purpose? It's absolutely possible, and I see it each and every day with my coaching clients. It all starts with learning how to slow down. You deserve to live the life you've always dreamt about. Let's get started. We're on episode number 44 today, and today's title is called Ignoring Influencers. So, are there influencers in your life? If you've been online for (laughs) as long as I have, you've seen influencers come and go, and in your everyday life, you may not think that you are persuade in any way by influencers, either online or in your real life. And that's fine. If you've got some sort of brick wall around you and influencer culture doesn't seep into your day-to-day, I am insanely excited and happy for you because that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about trying to find a way to put the blinders up and find a way to not let someone else's version of what they think life should look like or be like or act like sway you in any way. Because that's what slowing down is all about. When you live a slow life, it's a life that you've decided to live on purpose by yourself, not necessarily by yourself in that you're alone (laughs) in a log cabin in the woods, a la mountain men, but a life that you've decided that this is how you want it to look. This is how you want it to feel. These are the people that you want to be surrounded by. These are the thoughts that you want to have. These are the physical items, the material items you want to bring into your house. You've actually taken the time to slow down and think about it and not just click Amazon Prime buy now um, because someone has told you that you absolutely must need this exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. So let's find a way to drown out the kind of hustle and hype culture. And it's really interesting because I got my start writing online and I found myself knee deep in influencer culture and being called an influencer against my will. And it wasn't something that I wanted or sought out or thought was a good idea for humans to have other humans want to emulate them and and emulate their their life and and their experiences and and try and I don't know pony up in in that way it um, always made me a little uncomfortable and so I want to share a few different stories today and also some movies that I think would be really interesting because you can read lots and lots about it but I think spent uh, watching a movie. <laughs> Just deciding to turn your brain off for a few hours and enjoy a movie on a couch with a bowl of popcorn is fantastic. So I have, let's see, how many movies do I have? I wrote them down. I have two movies that really showcase the influencer culture. Um, So one is called The Joneses, and that has Demi Moore in it, and it's spelled the, and then J-O-N-E-S-E-S, which I always thought was a little weird because I thought the plural sound for, the plural for Jones would be J-O-N-E-S and then the apostrophe after. I think Joneses is, I don't think is right, but that's how the movie is spelled. So there's that movie and it has Demi Moore. There's another movie called Keeping Up with the Joneses 
And that has John Hamm in it, and he is a spy. And that is not the movie we're talking about today. Although that is a fun sort of, it's kind of stupidy slash sticky movie. But looking at John Hamm is always a good thing. And I'm pretty sure he takes his shirt off at one point. So anyway, good movie. But The Joneses is the movie that we're going to talk about today. And then there's another movie that is relatively new. I think it just came across my Hulu screen in the last 30 days or so. And that's called Not Okay. And both of these movies talk about influencer culture. So in the premise of the Demi Moore Joneses movie, and I'm pretty sure that's on Amazon Prime. Maybe it's on Hulu. Maybe it's both. Um, It's a quote unquote perfect looking suburban family kind of ends up in this idyllic neighborhood. So if you think of like the type of neighborhood that Desperate Housewives was filmed in on Wisteria Lane. So it's a cul-de-sac and this family moves in and they are actually not a family. They are walking, talking catalogs placed in by marketers. And so the car they drive, the watch they wear, the clothes, where they get their hair done. They're all being paid by some great corporation conglomerate to infiltrate this community and get everyone in it to try and buy into this materialistic buy frenzy. And so the kids are in high school, and so they're showing off at their locker, and then all of a sudden the kids in the school want all of the things that they are essentially advertising. And that's what that movie is about. And it's fascinating to me because I found myself embedded in this accidentally when I was going through the the beginning sort of years of the a year of crock potting side, a year of slow cooking. And it, and it wasn't something that I was interested in. I, I literally thought when I started writing the Crock-Pot site, I thought I would just be known for someone who used their Crock-Pot and for following through with a New Year's resolution. Never did I think I would be making up new recipes. Never did I think that somehow... Crock-Pot and and Ninja and different brands would reach out to me to have me review their slow cooker. That was never an idea for me. I've liked New Year's resolutions. I liked going for dreams and and the, the big picture. I've always had a big picture. At the time, it was I needed to find a legitimate way to work from home with my kids. That was my end goal, not trying to influence anyone about the world's best crock pot or anything in that way. And I think you've heard me joke before that the idea of coming up with an even better pot roast recipe after there were already dozens and dozens on the site just seemed phony baloney and it made me feel very uncomfortable. It felt fraudulent and I I didn't like that feeling. So I would go to blogging conferences and different conferences put on by brands, and they would try and influence us to then write about these things online and try and convince essentially strangers to then go out and buy this thing. So one of the very first parties and influencer events I was invited to was by Nintendo. And it was awesome. And another one of my blogging friends came to my house and we were picked up in a limo and it was moms and kids going to this Nintendo conference. And we ended up strapping car seats in the back of this limo. And so the kids were in the back and and I'm now in the back seat of this limo heading to a conference um, where we were really wined and dined by Nintendo. And what's ironic is I've had a background in early childhood education and don't like tech and think tech is bad 
for babies' brains and and don't like, I personally don't like video games. Growing up, um, Adam played video games and when we first started dating, I felt like he was addicted to computer video games and it really annoyed me and bothered me. And once we got married, he did have a PlayStation and he did have different consoles, but he thankfully outgrew that <laughs> by the time we had children. And so we we go, This her name happened to be Jen, because of course all of my friends are named Jen. <laughs> so Jen Sharpen, if you're listening to this, I am shouting you out and I hope all is well with you and your baby girls. But so Jen Sharpen and I, went to this event and I think we were given a Wii and this was when Wiis were kind of new to the market. And I liked the idea of a Wii. I thought being active and, and getting kids at least up off the couch was a good idea. But I never wrote about this. I, I took the swag, but I was not a very good influencer because I was writing about crockpots and recipes. And that did not fit my narrative in any way. And I wasn't going to go off kilter to write about this. I happily took the merchandise and maybe that is horrible and I shouldn't have done it, but I totally did. So there was, there was that. I, I did take (laughs) that and enjoyed it. Um, I do remember not drinking any of the free champagne because I had, I think, a four or five-year-old with me and it didn't seem appropriate at all to be drinking and finding the limo and navigating and getting back to our house and say, like, none of that made sense. We're, we're going over, I think, the Golden Gate Bridge in this limo and, and the idea of drinking really bugged me. So there was that. Um, There was another time I was given a Samsung refrigerator and we still have that refrigerator. It's a fantastic refrigerator. It's expensive and it wouldn't have been something that I would have picked out or bought myself. And I did write about that and I wrote about the pros and the cons of the Samsung refrigerator and the con was... And, and not con like they were trying to con me, but con as in the opposite of pro on my list was that I thought it was too expensive. It was, I, I can't even remember. Um, I can't remember the price. And so I don't want to throw my dollar signs out because I really don't know how, what it cost. But we had a perfectly good refrigerator in our house. We were not in the market for a refrigerator, but we were given money to go to Best Buy. And so it was like a a combo Best Buy Samsung campaign. And we were given thousands of dollars in Best Buy gift cards in order to go buy this refrigerator. So Adam and I went, we picked out the refrigerator and they had it delivered. And thankfully the refrigerator we had, we were able to give to a friend of mine who desperately needed a new refrigerator. So it was a win-win for me. So we I'm starting to write about it, and the the con was that I think, I thought, I believed, it cost too much for a, a typical suburban family didn't need all of these bells and whistles and didn't need such a fancy refrigerator. And I also wrote that I was worried because at the time, Samsung hadn't really pushed into the marketplace of home appliances. They are mostly known for audiovisual stuff, for their televisions, for their stereos. And so I wrote about that, that I was worried about that, but hey, it was free. And who am I to say no to free things? Well, my article wasn't approved. (laughs) The brand read it and didn't like it and wanted me to put in all of these different sound bites and, and, and points and bullet points that then Google would crawl. And so if you were ever searching for Samsung refrigerators, you would hopefully come across a insanely glowing review. Well, that was going on my own website. And so I did not want to do that. And I think what ended up happening was they scrapped the article. I got to keep the refrigerator, 
but I never worked with Samsung ever again. And it's fine. I, I, I know there were, there were some of my blogging friends who ended up with washer and dryers with them and, and different things. And, and later down the road, I actually heard that the washer, because they were front loaders and they had this rubber gasket, there was a big problem with mold. So I was very pleased that that's not something that we decided to do. We've always liked my old <laughs> top loading washer dryer that uh, we've had for Gosh, we've been married 23 years, so I guess 20 years. So where are I going? Where am I going, Steph? Good to know. So I have always put ethics and morals and integrity first and foremost. And I wasn't ever interested in writing about something that didn't feel true to me when... Ninja flew me to Boston to show me the prototype of the Ninja cooking system and asked me to be in the infomercial. I was practically drooling over this prototype and Adam was with me and I remember him sort of kicking me under the table and giving me a look like, okay, let's be businessy now here, Steph. And I would have written about that thing and told you about it for free because it was an awesome, awesome crock pot. They do not make them anymore. Now they are doing the Ninja Foodie and it has an air fryer and a pressure cooker in it. And I've never tried one and I know nothing about it, but I loved the Ninja cooking system. Love, love, loved it. That said, they paid me to be in the infomercial and I did get um, some money anytime anyone bought the cooking system through the link on my website, and I was very upfront about that. I didn't use some of the lines that were written in the teleprompter during the infomercial because it felt wrong to me. It felt uncomfortable. One of the lines was I was supposed to eat beef stew and then look at the camera and say, this is the best beef stew I've ever had. Well, I, I didn't want to say that because that wasn't true, first of all. And, and second of all, beef stew tastes like beef stew. And how you cook it, it, it really doesn't matter. It's the ingredients that go into the pot, not how it's cooked. And so I felt very uncomfortable with that. If you put in a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and red wine, your beef stew is going to taste good regardless of whether or not it was cooked on the stove, in the oven, in a cast iron pan over coals in a old school crock pot or in the ninja cooking system. It's all going to taste the same. It has nothing to do with the cooking method. It has to do with the ingredients. I knew this, so I felt uncomfortable saying that. And so I didn't. And, and I remember at one point they had hired this scriptwriter guy and he, I said, oh, I'm not going to say that. And he goes, sure you can. It's written right there in the teleprompter. And I remember like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. But there was this, um, this great woman on set and she's this older lady, Mona, and she was fantastic. And she said, well, Stephanie needs to protect her brand also. And I thought that was really interesting. And it was the first time, um, I had thought of the term brand. And so anyway, that, that, that was interesting. There were a few other different weird things that happened. I went to um, Atlanta for a Coke event with a whole bunch of bloggers, and we were spoken to for a few hours by a pan of pan, panel of nutritionists, and they wanted us to write and talk about how aspartame and NutraSweet were calorie-free, and they were essentially great ingredients for this sport drink for kids because they were calorie free and they wanted us to write about it. And we pushed back and started talking about chemicals in the body and a precursor to cancer. And is this really a good idea? And what type of studies have been done? And they didn't like it <laughs> that this group of moms were questioning the dietitians and the nutritionists. So um, I never wrote about that, but I did get a free trip to Atlanta over it. So that was awesome. So that movie, The Joneses, and all of the different things I just described tie in together. 
The other movie that I want to talk about and have you watch and just be aware of, especially if you've got teenagers in the house or preteens or work with them, is called Not Okay. And that is about fraud and making stuff up on the internet in order to be internet famous. And there's this whole idea that you are nobody unless you're internet famous or have a big following. And then there's also, there's this whole realm of thought of take a picture or it didn't happen or share it or it didn't happen. And that goes against any way of trying to slow down and live a calm, centered, and peaceful life. And it sort of makes me a little nauseous when I think about it. When when I think of people living through the lens of their phone or the lens of their camera and not being in the here and the now. It's not something that is great role modeling for your kids. And I would like you to pause and really sort of shake yourself up if you find that you're doing these things. If when you are on a family vacation or enjoying a family event or a party and you're trying really hard to capture and document versus being fully present. So there's something to be said about pulling out your camera and snapping some shots and and doing, okay, we're going to have picture time and doing pictures. Great. Do that. And then put the phone away and enjoy and be in the here and the now. So in not okay, the whole premise is this She wasn't an influencer at the time. She was a wannabe writer, and she said she was going to go to Paris, and um, she couldn't afford to go to Paris. So she lied, and in order to cover her tracks, she faked it. She photoshopped herself in all of these pictures and, and made it seem like she was literally in Paris. Well, I'm I'm just going to give away the premise of the movie because you figure this out in like the first four and a half seconds that the whole thing is fake. And that Paris happened to when she was supposed to be there, have a terrorist attack. So now all of her influencer, Instagram-y people think she was in a terrorist attack. So because of that, she got a ton of fame and notoriety and things like that, and and was immediately, quote unquote, famous, all on a fraud. So why am I bringing this up to you? I'm bringing this up to you because some uncomfortable things happened, and I overheard side conversations while I was in the middle of this frenzified blogging craze where people really did want to be internet famous. There was a very popular blogger, very popular, and people criticized her every move. And there was a forum where they kind of dragged her down and criticized every post, every picture she put out. And I remember having lunch with this group of food bloggers and one of them saying, oh, I would kill to be as famous as so-and-so and and have a website devoted to tearing me down. I just remember kind of looking at her and, and thinking, I don't think you know what you're saying. Why on earth would you want every single thing you do to be criticized and a whole group of people tearing you down? Like the, the, the tagline of be careful what you wish for is what floated through my brain. And and there's just no way anyone would really wish for that. There was another example of a blogger at the time was in an airplane crash. It was a horrific, horrific airplane crash. And 80% of her body or something like that was burnt. 
and you could overhear at different blogging events and conferences and writers' conferences, oh, so-and-so is so lucky that happened to her because now blah, blah, blah brand wants to partner up with her and she's going to be a millionaire. I remember thinking and hearing this, like, you're insane to, to wish a plane crash. That, that's just nuts. It's, it's not correct in any way. And so please slow down and, and really think through what you're saying and, and what you're putting out there. But no one, no one would wish a plane crash. There was somebody else and, and their child had Down syndrome and, and she wrote about it. And so then all of a sudden she got a bunch of followers and then other people were talking about how lucky she was because she was able to have this life experience. And d- different different things set different people off, but I really want you to pay attention and, and go through and follow the daisy chain of the thoughts you're having because that's not what you want. If, if you want fame, it's probably because you think somehow that will make you feel better or will provide some sort of level of financial freedom. But there's a difference between being famous and being infamous, and, and you certainly don't want the latter. And if you do, then, then that's great, but you probably are not listening <laughs> to a podcast on slow living, which is cutting out the noise, cutting out the hype, cutting out the hustle, and in you doing you, and you figuring out what really makes you click and and makes you feel good about yourself. So one of my absolute famous bloggers of all time to me navigates this influencer culture and being a real human and a real person and I'm going to actually reach out to her and see if she'll come onto the podcast. So Kim Demon writes Today's Creative Life. And I've always looked up to her. And I love that she has these relationships with brands, but she's also a real person. And if it doesn't fit her personality, her aesthetic, what she really believes in, she says no. And it's refreshing to see. And she literally just wants to share and and help. And this is the DIY project I did. It is not perfect in any way. Um, You can tell that there's a mistake here and there, but it's fine. And she posts that. And she was one of my blogging uh, mentors and somebody I always looked up to and at one point, I will get her on the podcast and you can hear our backstory where we um, first met online. But she is who sort of showed me that it was okay to be real. And if you look at my crockpot uh, food <laughs> photos, they're horrible. <laughs> they're, they're really bad pictures, but they're real. And we really did eat the food. At at one point I did invest in some lighting and better lenses. And and I tried, but the fact is the food still came out of the crock pot and it it wasn't the best. I went to a food blogging conference and there was this entire panel telling us how to photograph food to make it look better. And I raised my hand and I said, well, my food comes out of the crock pot. So it's all a little soggy. And the woman leading the panel said, you need to take it out then when it's not fully cooked and take a picture while the sweet potatoes still have the shape and the the carrots still have the shape and they're still glistening here and there. And I said, well, you can't eat it then because it would be too tough. And she says, it doesn't matter what it tastes like. It matters what it looks like. And that always has sort of rubbed me the wrong way. 
and not something that I fully believe in. There, there was another part when they were talking about in this panel, uh, food advertisements. And you can look online of what a McDonald's hamburger really looks like when you unwrap it and what the image that they use in the campaigns look like. And they plump the meat. They're, they're literally injecting it with broth. It's all supposed to be edible. So they're not injecting it with plastic or silicone or something you can't eat, but they are injecting it with broth. A rotisserie chicken, when you see it on TV and you cut into it and all of this juice comes out, that's because with a hyperdermic needle, they have injected it with either broth or hot steamy water right before the knife cuts in. With hamburger bun seeds, they have used tweezers and dipped each seed in a cornstarch and water solution to, to make it a little sticky or some sort of simple sugar syrup to make it sticky. And then they've placed all of the sesame seeds. That's not real. And that isn't comfortable for me. Also, it's a lot of time and effort and energy that I am just literally not interested in ever doing. But that's what it is. We would go to these food conferences and food would come out and people would stand on their chairs trying to get a perfect photo to then put on Instagram or Pinterest. And and things that just weren't interesting to me. It, it, and, and if that's interesting to you and you look at the photos as art, I am a-okay with it. But tell people, tell people it's not real. Tell people that it took 20 takes to get this one photo. Otherwise, you're scrolling, 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 and you start feeling inadequate. You start feeling bad about yourself. You start thinking, well, gosh, my hamburgers never look like that. Or my rotisserie chicken after cooking in the slow cooker for eight hours falls apart. That's real and that's normal. So paying attention to influencers and knowing that they're not real and making sure your kids know that they're not real is insanely important. The Joneses movie, I think, is PG-13. There's some violence in it, but other than that, maybe some languaging, I think it's an okay movie to watch with your family. The not okay movie, I would have probably ages 13 and up, PG-13. They do say bad words. I think it's the F word, actually. Um, and that was because it didn't go out in the theaters or on regular television in any way. It was straight to streaming services, straight to Hulu. Um, and then there was one sex scene that I fast forwarded through because we were watching it <laughs> as a family. But talk to your kids. Let them know scrolling endlessly and doing things just for likes and shares isn't healthy. Be present. Put the phone down. Pay attention. I get emails here and there and, and people ask, how do you get your kids to stay off their phone at the dinner table? Well, the answer is not one of us ever has a phone out at the dinner table. They're, they're, it's just not even brought into the room. And by our dinner table, I'm actually talking about our kitchen counter because we all eat <laughs> around the kitchen counter on bar stools. But there's no phone there. The, f the phones are not there. It's, it's not an issue. So if you, as a parent, have an issue with your phone, your kids are going to have an issue with the phone. But kids, kids model and kids follow what they think is normal. And they're just trying to fit in. So if you've got an issue with it, your kids are going to have an issue with it. If you do not have an issue and your teens do, then place boundaries. You are the adult in charge. Put it away. They can't have it out at school. Same thing, dinner table, tech-free zone. If you've got your phone out, put music on, Th that type of thing. And, and not music in your earbuds, music for the whole family. I'm going on a rant now. But you get to decide what comes into your house and what is acceptable and what isn't. 
And it doesn't mean your kids are missing out in any way. We're talking 15 minutes while we're eating dinner. Last week, maybe it was the week before, I don't know, Adam and I went out to dinner and it was our anniversary and we were in a rather fancy pants restaurant for us. I think the the meals were all 30-ish dollars a plate and we don't go out very often, so it was great. But walking to the bathroom, I came across all of these people that there were couples on dates, but they were each looking at their phone. There were families I was passing, families of four, and every single person was looking at their phone. Don't fall victim to that. Don't ignore the people who are right in front of you because you're worried about the people in the phone, the fake people in the phone. They're not, they're not real. The, the people that you can hug and touch and squeeze and talk to in real life and make real eye contact with. Those are the people you need to pay attention to. Okay. I hope this helped a bit. If you have any questions, email me at any time. I'm at Steph at stephanieoday.com. If you've got a problem with this and you want some help sort of tweaking your mindset or, or ask me questions, put yourself on my calendar. You can do that at stephanieoday.com forward slash mindset. Also in one of the past episodes, I had talked about a coaching worksheet that we are currently actually going through in the Slow Down Society Facebook group. If you'd like to join the Slow Down Society Facebook group, we are doing a 30-day journaling challenge using this worksheet. The worksheet is embedded in the group. I'm also happy to email you a copy of the worksheet at stephanieoday.com. Well, it's steph at stephanieoday.com. Just ask for the coaching worksheet. And what this is, is it's a one-page slow yourself down journaling worksheet. I've done tons of different journaling prompts and have tried almost everything. And I found that keeping it to a page, it's still a guided worksheet, helps streamline the process and taking the time to add 15 to 20 minutes of self-reflection and journaling at the beginning of your day really is one of the absolute best ways to set yourself up for living the life of your dreams, for living out the life that you've chosen on purpose in a slow, methodical, thoughtful way. You can still meet your goals. You can still have huge dreams, but do it on your terms, nobody else's terms, not the influencers, not the hustlers, not the people that you see online because they're not real. The person that's real, the person that knows you best is you. And if you're thinking to yourself, you know what, Steph? I don't even know who I am. I don't even know what I want. Then that is a red flag. And that there is why you should unplug and put your blinders on and keep your eyes on your own paper and go within and figure it out. Figure it out once and for all because you deserve this. You really only do live one time. If we are lucky, it's long and you've got time to get the stuff done that you want to do. But if you really are not your own best friend, if you really don't know what it is you really want and you really don't know where it is you're going, then it's absolutely time to slow down and I'm happy to help. All right. I think you are wonderful and amazing and lovely and are having a great hair and butt day. I'll talk to you soon. You take care. Do you have a slow living story to share? Leave me a voicemail at stephanieoday.com forward slash podcast with any questions, comments, feedback, or testimonials, and I will be sure to include it in an upcoming episode. Also, if you found value in this episode, please share it with your family and friends and subscribe through your favorite podcast provider. The more you share, 
comment, and leave positive reviews, the more people we can reach and share the slow living, lifestyle, and messaging. Thank you, Slow Down Society, and have an absolutely wonderful day.